Raising money is a form of going into debt. You can either get a loan, which you're not going to get when you're a startup, or you can go say, I'll give you 40% of my company, 30% of my company for $28 million for round one. You know, A, we'll do 10 million. You know, you know this stuff. You, 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 you've read about this. You're familiar with this. So if you don't raise the money, you can't accelerate hiring, technology, office space, advancement, partnerships. You, you just can't make the product as good as you could because you have to make everything cheaper. So I, I look, I sit there and I, I, I see the negative aspects of purchasing power, 97%, which means a dollar is now worth three cents, but that's because of inflation, which they fully have control over. And I fully see that as a big problem. I mean, you heard Powell yesterday say the fact that they're not going to raise the rates until 2023, until inflation goes back to 2%. But to say advancement would be at the same level, I would really want you to dissect that a little bit more. Maybe I'm not getting it because I don't see how advancement would be at the same level if we weren't lending. Well, the assumption there is that we are not lending. I'm not talking about that. I think I think lending is a very important part uh, of uh, financing capital projects and productive projects. I'm not talking about getting rid of loans or anything like that. I'm talking about making the loans realistic and not so easy so that people are more cautious with the loans. So we don't have the busts and the, and the destroyed business ventures quite so often. So we look at the business ventures that succeed, so this is wonderful. But then we, we forget all about those little companies that never succeeded, collapsed, because they shouldn't have been loaned, they shouldn't have gotten the money in the first place. They were underfinanced. I think the best, I guess the best example of that is the, the housing bubble, the real estate bubble. That we've lived through it a couple of times. We're living through it now again, the second time. No question. And you could go and, and you could buy a house. Didn't make any difference whether you were employed or not. Made no difference how much money you earned. Made no difference how expensive. You didn't have to prove that you could pay for that house. You could just go borrow the money. And the banks knew that when the loan finally soured, that they get bailed out by the federal government. So they didn't care whether you whether it was a good loan or not because they were going to make their money one way or the other. And that's what I'm talking about. If if there were a real honest system, and then the loans wouldn't be so big and so easy, but they would still be there and they would be more they'd be restricted to the ventures that have the highest possibility of of succeeding and we get all of the failures out of that picture and 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 you've got a reduced uh let's say a portfolio of all the succeeding companies, but you've also got a huge reduction in the failure co uh, companies as well. You put them together. My, my solid conviction is that the growth would be slower, but it would be more even and we would get rid of the booms and the busts and the end result would be better than what we actually have seen. I think of a book was by, written by Henry Hazlitt, one of the original books that got me thinking as a as a free market type of a person years ago, Henry Hazlitt wrote a book uh, called Economics in One Lesson. I urge everybody to read that book. And when I first saw the title of that, I thought this is absurd. How can there be one lesson for something like economics, which is so diverse? So I bought the book. And by the time I got to page seven, I said, by golly, he did it. He got it into one lesson. So I'd like to paraphrase that lesson for you because this, we're talking about that now. Hazlitt said, and get this right. When analyzing the merits or the demerits of any economic proposal, we must not consider just the effect of it on one person or group of people for a short period of time, but we should look at the effect on all groups of people and all individuals over a long period of time. And that is it. When you, you just look at the good things that happen and forget the bad things, for example, you look at here's somebody that deserves to be helped, but you don't think about all the people that don't deserve to have the money taken out of their pockets so that you can help this one person. Maybe you put those people into poverty. You know, if you put if you look at all aspects of the equation over a long period of time, it's a whole different story. I think that lesson of economics applies to what we're talking about.